Welcome to week 11 of our lecture in Living in the IT era. For this week, we will be talking about art and life side of the internet. Our essential questions for this week are, what are the different utopian and dystopian views of the internet, as well as the relationship between the internet and interpersonal communication? Our intended learning outcomes to be able to determine the progress of acceleration in media and information, as well as describe how the internet is related to civic engagement. Dark side of the internet. The dark side of the internet involves these four topics the utopian and dystopian use of the internet, media acceleration and information, internet addiction and isolation, as well as selective exposure and political polarization. So when we say utopian and dystopian views of the internet, we need to know what is the meaning of the word utopia. So utopia is the idea of having a perfect society in which everyone works well with each other and is happy, according to the Cambridge Dictionary. The term utopia was coined from the Greek word meaning no place or nowhere by Sir Thomas More in his 1516 book called Utopia, describing a fictional place in an almost perfect society. What is the importance of having a utopian view in technology? What should the future be like? What would we want life to be like one day? So that is the view of utopia in technology. So it is describing to us an ideal society where we want to live, where everyone cares about each other and then everyone is content and happy with living in that particular society. Negative effects of having a utopian view in technology. So what is dystopia? Dystopia is the opposite of utopia, wherein dystopia is an imagined world or society in which people lead wretch or wretched, dehumanized and fearful lives, according to the Merriam, Merriam Webster Dictionary. So the perfect example of a dystopian society can be seen in different movies. So for example, if you are familiar with the movie about Terminator, so in the Terminator movie franchise, we can see that the world has been inhabited by robots meant to kill uh, living beings, as well as in the Matrix trilogy of movies, we can find a world in which humans are harvested like um, resources by a computer AI which took over the world. So those are examples of a dystopian society wherein life is very hard and People are scared in each and every day of their lives. Utopian and dystopian views of the internet and technology. So if you come to think of it, the purpose of having internet and technology is to help people have a better life, have access to different information and be able to work and live more comfortably. So that is the actual intent of the development of internet and different technologies. However, different concepts, different abuses in internet and technology can lead to a dystopian society just like what is happening in the world today. 
the advent of fake news, the advent of misinformation, the advent of uncontrolled AI resulting to uh, deep fakes or resulting to discrediting of different personalities which intends to destroy not only uh, a particular individual but certain groups or of people so internet and technology both have a positive side in the case of a utopian society and a negative side in the case of a dystopian society wherein abuses are made media acceleration and information so what is data smog data smog is considered as information overload or the abundance of information that cannot be filtered out and cannot be processed, resulting to misinformation. So data smog points out the staggering amount of information and data usually acquired through internet searches. Now, these are the tips on how we could avoid the negative effect of data smog. Go on data fast. So what do we mean to say by data fast or data fasting? Data fasting is just like having a diet, okay? Meaning to say, we must not always surround ourselves with information from the internet. We must be vigilant as well as we must be picky or juicy on the information or the data that we consume. Next, try spending some time away from communication devices, television, and the internet. Of course, this is given. If you want to fast on data, you must stay or you must limit your stay from devices that gives out tons and tons of information. Next, make use of print media every once in a while. So during this day and age where everyone is consuming information via cell phones, tablets, or computers, you must remember that before everything or every one of these devices were invented, people make use of printed media with the likes of books, newspapers, and the likes. So in order for us to have a more efficient and a more uh, and a more uh, more healthy um, absorption of data, you, we must make use of print media, or it is easier to absorb and all the information are not loaded in one particular page or one particular on screen. Avoid sending or next is avoid sending or forwarding chain messages or any other useless information online. Okay, of course this is given because um, if we do this, we will be adding to the data smog that is happening in the internet. Then lastly, filter unwanted messages or emails. Sometimes it's also called a spam. So we must filter out spam, email, or emails that does not have any sense. Next, media acceleration in sport culture. So media, with the use of technology from television, to the internet have accelerated and defined sports culture today. Why is that? Because more people are getting engaged in the different sports that they like. They are, they have an easier access to consume such media, particularly um, have um, interaction with their favorite sports athletes and as well as 
to have instant information on the status of their favorite teams in the different sports that they follow. Twitter. Twitter has been an avenue for athletes to promote their brands, activities, and update with updates, update us with regards to their own feelings, which cannot be seen in ordinary news or internet media. Instagram. Ever since the introduction of Instagram stories for users can upload a series of 15 second long videos that will expire and begin after 24 hours, this feature made fans feel even closer to the game. Blog. Blogging was introduced in the Philippines in early 1995 and started to grow during 2012 as a revolutionized medium of communication and probably influenced Philippine society. So vlog or blog. So blogging, also known as video blogging, requires commitment, consistency to build a habit from the audience and set a series of videos that follow an individual's daily life. It usually lasts from about five to 15 minutes, and usually it uses YouTube to, to consume longer form and highly produced video content. So what are the benefits of this? It is to build brand, build leverage, and build relevance. So build brand. Build brand denotes that through this uh, media, tools, such as Twitter, Instagram, blogs, personalities, or organizations are able to make their name be more familiar with a wider audience. So it makes their team or that particular person more prestigious, which will in turn help them either sell tickets or sell merchandise, build leverage. So when we say leverage, it is the advantage from your particular competitors. So leverage in, in terms of, for example, in the NBA, so we know that the most famous teams are the Lakers or Golden State simply because they are the ones or the teams that are trending right now. So they have leverage from the other teams in the NBA simply because their, their supporting cast, their staff, their players are more relevant to people today. So that also is related to building relevance. So relevance is how you relate to people today. So those are the benefits of those uh, media acceleration tools. Again, building branding, building leverage or advantage from other uh, teams or organizations in the same sport and relevant, having a relevant or, or being able to touch the daily lives of your fans or the people following the particular teams or players. What are the drawbacks? It invites criticism. And it takes effort. Of course, you have to post or update information, if not every hour, at least every day. And it needs commitment from the organization or from the players. Internet addiction and isolation. So internet addiction or internet addiction disorder is defined as an impulse control disorder, but without the involvement of legal drugs or alcohol. So there are different types, like games, cyber sexual and cyber relationship, social networking, net compulsions, and information. So in games, it includes excessive amounts of time playing online games and gambling, like online poker, 
It is a type of addiction that is very rampant nowadays, especially with the younger generation. Mm -hmm. uh, so cyber sexual and cyber relationship includes obsession, obsession with online dating, pornography, and cyber sex. Mm -hmm. Social networking includes the overusage of social networking sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the likes. These are also feeling the need to constantly update his or her social media and monitor different posts. Net compulsion includes addiction in online shopping or stock trading. And information includes obsession with searching and collecting different information. are the signs of internet addiction. So the user uses internet to cope with negative feelings and bad mood. The user feels anxious, restless, irritable, or moody when they are not able to go online. The user is unable to minimize the use of internet after multiple attempts. The user loses track of time when online. The user chooses to spend most of his or her time using the internet over other significant things in life like work, school, travel, relationship, and others. And the user is willing to sacrifice for this job, relationship, or opportunities to be able to go online. Now, what are the causes? The user might be shy in real life. They feel secure with the feeling of anonymity when using the internet. The user turns to internet to escape from problems. The user uses the virtual world to connect with people to compensate for the lack of ability in real life communication. Obviously, the feeling of having good access to everything persuades me to use the internet more often than needed. What are the effects of internet addiction? Family problems. The user does not spend time with his or her family, which leads to disagreement. Mental health problems. It creates another persona online, which may soon lead to depression and anxiety if it is not used moderately. Academic difficulty, it significantly decreases the user's academic records. Financial issues, internet addiction can be costly, especially with online gambling and online games. Medical problems, spending too much time using the computer can be the cause of complications in our health, like severe headaches, body aches, carpal tunnel syndrome, dry eyes, and eating irregularities. Over complication, these the user to neglect office works that may lead to losing a user's job. Unhealthy sleeping habits, internet addiction, which the user lose, lose track of time due to long durations of overuse of the internet. Social awkward, frequent use of the internet takes away the time that can be used to socialize and explore the world. How do we treat internet addiction? First is self-help, which can be used if the person thinks that the problem is not that serious yet. And lastly, professional treatment, if this, which involves a licensed psychologist or counselor who can help the user in controlling their use of the internet. So for self-help treatment, number one, keep track of your daily internet use. Number two, look for other easy activities that can be used to replace the time of using the internet. Number three, think of reasons why you always end up using the internet too much. Number four, if you feel restless when not using the internet, try different relaxation methods to center yourself. Number five, keep yourself busy doing other things. Number six, if there's still no progress, start to consider asking for professional help. Professional treatment. So professional treatment involves cognitive behavior therapy treatment, as well as residential inpatient internet addiction treatment centers. If I'm not mistaken, residential inpatient internet addiction treatment centers are not yet available officially in the Philippines because mostly our treatment facilities here are catered for drug addiction, alcohol addiction, 
and some even gambling, but not yet. Uh, with internet addiction. There, there's no specialty treatment center in the Philippines yet for that. What is social isolation? Social isolation is a state in which a person feels the lack, in which a person feels the lack of ability in socializing. The person also feels like he or she does not belong and usually feels in creating relationships with others. People who feel socially isolated involuntarily prevent contact and socialization between individuals and the society. Person experiences social isolation if he or she suffers from shame and depression, solitude, social anxiety and fears of abandonment, lack in social contact, relationships on social and professional are limited, as well as loneliness and distress. Emotional isolation is a state of being unable and unwilling to share emotions with anyone occurs due to social isolation and is isolated emotionally because of social networks. Solitude, isolation, and loneliness. Solitude means being alone. Isolation means lack of support in social relationship and emotions. And loneliness means longing for social con contact. So those three have different meaning. So when we say solitude, isolation, and loneliness, they are not the same, okay? So they have different meanings and levels of, or levels or degree in which they occur or happen. The social media cause isolation, of course, okay? Social media can cause isolation simply by being with a group or social media friends that treats you differently from other persons. So leading to isolation. So we must always be careful with everything that we do in social networking sites. How the internet affects social isolation. So lower internet use by teenagers or adolescents is related to a better relationship with parents and even friends. So according to the study conducted by Sanders, Field, Kego, and Kapil in 2000. Selective exposure and political polarization. Now, what is selective exposure? It is the tendency of a person which, within mass media to avoid stumbling upon an information that opposes their current opinion to search for an information that can strengthen or prove their view. Selective exposure in the internet age. Negative side. Readers should not avoid information contradicting their current view. Instead, the reader should learn to read information to educate themselves without the need to change their opinions because selectively reading information that only coincides with the reader's belief can cause the reader to miss out on important always remember that we must not avoid the beliefs that are contrary to our view instead we must be open to all the views in our or from other people positive sides Readers should learn what to believe or what not to believe when reading information online. This way, readers should stay away from fake news and from spreading it. What is political polarization, which is very rampant in the Philippines? Polarization is both a state and a process. Polarization 
as a state refers to the extent to which opinions on an issue are opposed in relation to some theoretical maximum. Polarization as a process refers to the increase in such a position over time. So what does it mean? So we, when we say polarization, it means how we view different views or opinions from our own. So as a state, as, as it states here by DiMaggio, Evans, and Bryson, this is the degree as to how we view the opinions that are opposite of our own. Now, as a process, it involves what act do we do over time when we encounter such opinions or such uh, views that are opposite of our own. So it might increase over time. Increase meaning to say um, the actions that we do might become more and more either violent or uh, more and more reactive over time. So for example, um, we might be um, declaring or expressing negative thoughts on social media and then over time we might be uh, joining rallies or such like activities. The impact of selective exposure to political polarization. According to Young One, in 2013, citizen selective exposure to ideologically slanted media outlets will lead to polarized attitudes toward political candidates. Conservative Republicans consuming more conservative media outlets were more likely to have polarized attitudes toward presidential candidates. So one such example is a petition in change.org in which Jeff Bezos, when uh, he went or he flew uh, in, in his uh, Spaceship called the Blue Origin. Uh, a petition was made in change.org, um, telling or telling people not to not allow Jeff Bezos to come back to Earth after his flight outside of the Earth. So imagine that. You might think it's silly, but many people are actually using this kind of polarization effect. For example, uh, during this 2022 elections, uh, polarizing views between different politicians have made people think of the election as negative or think of other um, politicians are as negative indi individuals simply because they do not allow themselves to view or to see the opposing views of the other candidates. So that is a very difficult topic to tackle. Now, moving on, let's go to the light side of the internet. So on the light side of the internet, we should be able to understand the relationship between the internet and interpersonal communication. We compare the advantages and disadvantages of the internet in developing interpersonal communication and describe 
how internet is related to civic engagement, and lastly, identify the importance of having networks. What is interpersonal communication? It is a type of communication taking place between or among two or more people. It includes conveying thoughts, ideas, and emotions by passing messages either verbally or non-verbally. Elements of interpersonal communication includes the message, the medium, the receiver, and the sender. So the communicators called, are called the senders and the receivers. We have the message, we have the barriers such as noise and feedback, which is response, as well as context and channel. The communicators include so or more people communicating with each other. The sender is responsible for sending the message, which is, which is considered the source, while the receiver is the individual who decodes the message that has been sent. So when we say barriers, these are the factors which can be internal or external, hindering the transmission of the message from the sender and the receiver. It can result in ineffective communication causing problems in conveying the right message. So these are the different barriers that we can have. We can have physical, personal, gender, emotional, language, status, cultural, organizational, semantic, and inattention. So for the feedback, feedback or response is an element of communication which entails the response of the receiver towards the message conveyed by the sender. It shows the understanding of the receiver to the message he decoded or processed. Context is the type of environment where the communicators are in while communicating with each, with each other. The setting or mood of the place can affect the way of communication and every communicator should consider this in any way possible. Channel pertains to the physical object used in conveying the message. They may differ from forms considering that there are different types of communication. How does it the internet influence our way of communication. So there are different ways that the internet affects our communication, especially during this uh, digital era wherein we do not need to be physically present in front of someone in order for us to communicate with them it has influenced the dynamics on how we connect to other people. Yes, we can message or uh, send messages or communicate with them by the internet or our devices, but the lack of a personal touch, the lack of awareness of being with someone in a particular surrounding outside of the virtual space has lessened the depth or degree in which we connect with other people through communication. So sadly, that is the truth. It is easier to connect, however, the depth or the degree in how we connect have lessened. Differences of internet over interpersonal communication. Number one, the information provided in the internet is more of a written than an interpersonal communication, which is more of an oral type of conversation, which means that the words are spoken. Number two, communication over the internet is considered undirected since there are lapses in transferring the data or the message. Number three, messages in internet are often anonymous as it covers a wide range of platforms resulting of a more diverse type of people involved in the conversation. While in an interpersonal communication, the communicators are personally talking to each other, giving other the chance to observe other expressions aside from how the speaker speaks. So take note, when we are connecting with someone, that is communication. However, when we are directly and physically connecting, talking to someone that is in 
master course, yeah, communication. So, communication over the internet and interpersonal communication are very different from each other. So, take note of that. Number four, since the internet is composed of interconnected networks, it captures a wide range of audience over the interpersonal type of communication that may vary from its scope. So through the use of the internet, we can communicate to anyone even outside of the earth. However, the degree to which we communicate can only vary through interpersonal communication because we have a sense of what the sender and the receiver is talking about. Communication over the internet reduces social presence, presence since it takes place in a virtual world. The personal communication itself takes its advantage in creating a stronger relationship among the communicators. Convenience in terms of time is more useful when it comes to using the internet compared to a personal conversation that needs consideration to other factors, including the place and proper timing to be able to reach the goal of sending the right information to the receiver and vice versa. Networking and community. What is a network? So a network is described as the group of devices having the capability to connect with each other and be able to send information. So it might involve different devices that sends and receives information. Community in the world of technology. Network of communities are a series of computer systems whose purpose is to give assistance to communities and provide services, particularly for those communities that are sharing the same goal and belief. Community technology centers are types of facilities headed by different organizations, such as nonprofit organizations, with strong assistance from the LGU or the national government. The goals of the network communities are provide easy access, information through the help of functioning networks or resources, give a trusted platform which can be used by the community in discouraging digital divide, promoting developed community through different te technology engagement, and develop a strong connection with the citizens of the community. Social capital are the factors represent that are present in a community or society. It is the network of values that focuses on maintaining a social relation leading to reaching the organizational goals. So social capital involves the following elements, so networks, belonging, safety, reciprocity, participation, citizen power, values and living, and diversity. Social group is a unit of people associated with each other due to their shared belief, characteristics, and principles. A social group, one side of social capital, variety based on direct approach. So we have bonds. So this is the link between people sharing the same culture and ethnicity. Common example is loved one and friends. Bridges focuses on the more body relationship compared to bonds, which is beyond its scope. Linkages related to people that are considered in the higher level or lower level of the hierarchical, hierarchical structure of a society. Those are your link, either above you or below you. Is there social capital in the social network side? So that is the question if there is a social capital in a social network site. Now, in order for us to call that that is a social capital, the following elements have been stated. So if we look deeply in the meaning of social capital and compare it with social networking sites, we can say that a social networking site is a social capital. In a sense or degree that these elements 
are found in the social networking sites. However, there are some instances wherein these particular elements are not fully followed or not are not fully present. So a social networking site can be a social capital. A social networking site can also be not a social capital. So depending on how they follow the elements found in the social capital. The internet and civic engagement. Civic engagement pertains to the works or activities of an individual or group of people concerning the civic values of the community. It involves discussion, reflection, and collaboration. What is internet civic engagement? It is several single or cluster commotion talking about civic issues as well as working with the help of each other, whether the actions are related to politics or not, with regards to using the internet. So it might involve political involvement, social responsibility, community research, association involvement, advocacy and education, philanthropic giving or works, and direct service. Differences and purpose of civic engagement in the internet. Types of civic engagement. We have direct service, officering your individual effort, vitality and time to speak and express your thoughts to help and provide the needs of the community. Community research focuses on discovering the probable asset challenges and social problems in the community as well as coming up with the best possible solutions to these problems. Advocacy and education involves the implementation of different ways to persuade the government or the decision of the corporate to make a decision that the entire community will benefit. Capacity building. The help and participation of the different sectors will make an improvement and develop current resources or create new capitals that will be used to find solutions and come up with a precise answer to the specific problems and make the community better. Political involvement concerns the involvement of a person in political activities such as participating in campaigns and voting the right person to serve the people. Socially responsible personal and professional behavior. Being responsible all the time on whatever you are doing, your actions must always be ethical regardless if it is personal or, or professional. Philanthropic works, being part and volunteering to the projects of the government or non-government organizations to raise funds and use this to provide the needs or you need something to the people of the community. Participation in association. Type of, a type of participation that encourages a person to be involved in existing organizations of the community that may improve your socialization skills to have a better foundation and better association in your community. Civic engagement organization in the Philippines. Some of them are the Philippine Red Cross, the Gaud Kalinga, and the Greenpeace Philippines. Philippine Red Cross, the purpose of this organization is helping out and serving the people under various offered services all over the Philippines. It includes national blood, managing the disaster, youth services, and so on. Kaod Kalinga, the goal of this is to eliminate the shortage, shortage and provide some basic needs for more than a million Filipino families, as well as establishing the trust and dignity of the poor people. Greenpeace is a volunteer organization doing some stuff for the environment. Their main proceeds are to stop climate change and preserve the environment to have a better place to live in. Impacts and importance of civic engagement. So what are the impacts and importance of civic engagement? In order for us to have a better society, better life, as well as to make changes for the betterment of all, Civic engagement is very important because without civic engagement, we will not know if people
agree to the current status of our society through the civic engagement those people living in the lower bracket of our society will have a higher life or a higher time living because no one is willing to help them out. So civic engagement is indeed very important. Internet-based engagement, a new form of civic participation. So change.org is an example that I have said earlier, wherein if you want to make changes to our society or community, individuals can sign up for a petition. There are also digital avenues or outlets for the nations wherein you can help out in uh, giving aids to people that are needing of assistance whether they are near you or outside of your particular country so uh, there are different means it's just that we have to have the responsibility of using the civic engagement for the, for, the better, for the betterment of life of other people. So that is all for today, guys. And thank you.